So today I've decided to tackle a cabinet that we've had for years and it's kind of an Ikea hack. Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Hampton Your House. I'm Belle and my channel is all about bringing the coastal Hamptons vibe to your house. I would love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel, which by the way is completely free and that way you won't miss out on anything new. So we've got this little ode to Ikea in the corner of our family room, an Ikea Billy bookcase, the CD towers and the Oxberg glass panel doors. I've decided to update it in a Hampton style using some white paint, new door handles and replacing the back of the Billy bookcase section. These glass panel doors weren't originally designed to go over the CD towers, but we hacked them on ourselves because at the time one of our kids was constantly pulling all the CDs and DVDs out onto the floor, so those doors helped to stop that problem. Well, we've got a lot of work to do, so let's get straight into it. First, I'm just going to declutter the stuff we have in here. There are a few cookbooks that I no longer use and a few CDs and DVDs that could probably go. I know many people don't even use these anymore, but hey, I'm a bit old school and I like having them. I think it's good for the kids to use them too. Because these particular IKEA cabinets are wood veneer, I can sand them and then paint them. If you're trying to paint laminate, make sure you paint on a primer or undercoat first or the paint won't stick. I used a little bit of spray on primer in a few places, mostly in the corner of the cabinets where it was hard to sand properly and it seemed to help. Try to keep all of your hardware in a Ziploc bag so it doesn't get lost. Now here's the part where we sand everything really well. I did this by hand, but in hindsight, I would recommend using a random orbital sander so you know that it's been done thoroughly and so you can do it more quickly. Either way, make sure you have a dust mask and safety glasses on or sunnies or your normal glasses are fine too, just to protect you from all that fine dust. After you've sanded each piece, make sure you wipe all of the fine dust off really well with a damp cloth. When it comes to the painting, you will need a small roller, preferably with a spare head, a paint tray, a paint stirring stick, a paintbrush and something to open your tin with. The paint I'm using today is the Dulux Low Gloss Aqua Enamel in the colour Vivid White. Now we start painting. My tip? Do the boring bits first, that way you can practice your painting skills on things that won't be as visible and when you get to the important bits, you will be a pro. Also, it will help to keep you motivated to see the whole thing as a finished product. When you're painting the shelves, lay them on a plastic party tablecloth or tarp that you don't need. If you put them on newspaper, you'll end up with little bits of newspaper stuck to the backs of your shelves. First, paint all of the edges and the underneath side of the shelves. You'll need to do at least two coats on the top, bottom and the front edge of the shelves. I just gave the chipboard edges one quick coat because they won't be visible anyway. Also, make sure you sand everything lightly with a fine grit sandpaper in between coats of paint. You want a medium to coarse grit sandpaper for sanding the surfaces before you start your painting. A great painting tip is to cover your paint tray with a plastic bag because when you finish painting, you don't have to spend hours trying to scrub every last bit of paint off the tray so that it won't flake off into your paint the next time you use it. Remember to cut in around the edges with the paintbrush first. 
If you like the look of painting with the paintbrush better, I recommend doing your first one or two coats with the roller and then do the final coat with a paintbrush to give it that slightly streaky wood grain look. Just make sure you only paint in the direction of the grain with the paintbrush. coats later, it's starting to look nice and bright and white. Next step, taking the back out of the Billy bookcase. It had started breaking off at the bottom, so I decided to replace it with some tongue and groove board, which gives the VJ panelling look. I bought one six metre long tongue and groove board and they cut it to size for me in the shop. If you need them to be narrower and your hardware store can't cut it lengthways for you, ask at your local school tech room if they would be willing to help you out. Grab some wood glue, put some in the joint of one board, slot the next one into place and make sure all the ends line up perfectly. When you're painting this stuff, make sure you cut in with a paintbrush before you do the rest with a paint roller. You'll also want to get the white paint down into knot holes in the wood, because if you don't, it kind of looks like a black hole. To attach the boards to the back of the bookcase. You're going to put some glue on and then nail it on afterwards as well. But before you glue or slot your boards into place, I highly recommend marking on the sides for thickness and positioning of the middle shelf so that when you come to hammering everything into place later, you know exactly where to put the nails along the middle. This will save you from having to measure it in a weird way like I did because unfortunately, I put the blue down before I had done this. Here I am measuring the position of the middle shelf afterwards. Oops. No nails came through. Success! With the doors, after you've given them a really good sand, you'll want to grab some blue painter's tape and tape off your glass right on the edge where the wood meets the glass. The tricky 
thing with these doors is that on one side at least, there's kind of a lip that overlaps the glass. If you can't get your tape to go in exactly the right spot, you can grab an extra bit of tape and add it on afterwards to get it in closer. Where you can, try to take your hardware off before painting and then put it all back on when it's all dry. three coats of paint later, it's so much fun taking the tape off to see that nice neat painted edge underneath. Now here's a couple of tips for when you're putting those tiny shelves back in. First, use a CD or DVD to double check the spaces between your shelves to save you having to move them later. And second, if you find that some paint is collected in the holes where you need to put those little pegs, just grab a screwdriver and spin it a couple of times in the hole. This should clear the paint out. For the cupboard doors, I got these awesome doorknobs from Bunnings, which I will link for you in the description box below. The knob has a little burr on the underneath side, so when you screw it on, just make sure that the knob stays still and doesn't spin around, or you will end up with a little circle drawn in your new paint. They also have the snap-off screws, so you just need to measure the length that you need and then snap it off at the length you want with some pliers. After attaching the doors, it's time to put everything back in again. And we are done. Here's the before. And after. So I hope this project has inspired you to go and tackle an old piece of furniture that you have and give it a whole new look. I'm so happy with the way that mine has turned out. Don't forget to subscribe to Hampton Your House. Thank you so much for stopping by. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.